All right, so like you say, you all have sent in a ton of stuff on this Tesla event. Mm -hmm. And it's got me thinking, like, clearly Elon Musk saying all this stuff about robo taxes and robots, like, really got people's attention. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Robot taxis next year. Right. Cheaper than taking the bus. Okay. It's like, come on, is this real? <laughs> so we're going to, like, really dig into this. But yeah. we're sticking with what Musk actually said. You know, no media hype or anything. Well, absolutely. And I think that's key here. Because, you know, Elon Musk, he's known for setting these uh, ambitious goals. Yeah. Some might even say a little crazy. Yeah. But whether it's SpaceX, Neuralink, or Tesla, yeah. he pushes the limits, yeah. right? And this event, total Musk move. Totally. I mean, he basically rolls out on stage in this futuristic car thing, the cyber cab. Right. No steering wheel, no pedals. Like, do they pull this straight from a movie set or what? Right. And then he shows off this bigger concept, the RoboVan. Mm -hmm. Basically, imagine a van. No driver, mm. just cruising around with like 20 people in it. Wow. It definitely grabs your attention. For sure. And to be fair to him, Tesla's done a lot in self-driving already. Yeah. But that timeline he throws out there, taxes in Texas, California by next T year, cyber cab production by 26. I know. That's aggressive, even yeah. for Musk. Well, give me flashbacks to like those old predictions, you know, flying cars by the year 2000. Right. Exactly. But okay, let's say just for a minute, he does it. Robo taxes everywhere. Mm. What does that world even look like? That's where it gets really interesting. Imagine you open your app, order a ride, and this car just pulls up, no driver. Whoa. So convenient. Yeah, but then there's the other side, right? Yeah. What about all the rules, the laws? Getting those cars on the road isn't like changing your phone's software update. Not even close. It's laws, safety tests, who's responsible if something happens. And that's before we even think about if people are ready to trust a computer to drive them around. Right. Okay. And then he mentioned this whole inductive charging thing. Like, yeah. what is that? Are we talking giant charging pads under every intersection or something? Well, that's one of the things we'll need to see more about for sure. Inductive charging, it uses a magnetic field to transfer energy. Okay. Like, you've probably seen those phone chargers. Right, right. But doing that for cars everywhere, in cities and stuff, that's a whole other level of engineering. So it's not just build a cool car. It's like you got to redo how the whole system works. Exactly. And then there's the cost, which Musk, of course, talked about. Oh, yeah. And this is what got me. $30,000 for the cyber cab. Wow. He's saying rides could be less than 50 cents a mile. Like, I spend more on coffee. Right. <laughs> How does that even make sense? Well, that's the million-dollar question, right? Making these self-driving cars, even in huge numbers, costs a ton of money up front. Mm -hmm. And then the batteries, the software, repairs, insurance, suddenly those low prices are a lot harder to believe. Okay, so maybe don't bet the farm on it just yet. Right. But let's say... Just for fun, CyberCab shows up next year. Yeah. That price. You buying one. Hmm. I got to be honest. I would need to see a lot more about how safe they are, how well they work. Yeah. It's one thing for a demo, another to trust it to get me to work every day. Totally. And this is just the robo-taxi part. Mm. Remember, he wasn't done. Mm. There's also this whole humanoid robot thing, Optimus. <laughs> okay. So we're picturing these robo-taxis zipping around, but hold on tight. Because things just got even more wild. Yeah, the internet pretty much lost it. Everyone's suddenly imagining robot butlers and, like, living in a cartoon. Right. But let's back up a sec. What did Musk actually show us, you know? Right, so this Optimus thing, it's not just, like, a fancy Roomba. Right. Musk says this thing can teach, bartend, mow your lawn. Yeah. And get this, he's aiming for a price around $20,000. Yeah. That's less than some used cars. It's definitely ambitious, no doubt about that. But what's interesting is how he's connecting this right back to Tesla's car stuff. Oh, how so? He kept saying shared parts, same development process, the batteries, the motors, even the AI software. So he's basically, what, building a robot uh -huh. using the same Lego blocks as a self-driving car. Mm. My brain's kind of broken right now. Laughs. Smart move if it works. Instead of, like, two totally different things, he's making one big system. Right. Anything they improve in the car helps the robot and vice versa. Makes sense for the tech side. But let's be real. We've all seen robots in movies, right? Of course. And usually the real thing is way less cool. You're right to be skeptical. To build a robot that can actually teach, bartend, that takes crazy good AI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, no. it's got to see the world, make choices, adapt. We're not there yet. Not really. And don't even get me started on the whole robots taking over I mean, scenario. Right. Like if Optimus starts making my drinks too strong, 
I'm out of there. I think we're safe from that for now, at least. But you're right. There's a huge E difference between what works in a lab and what you can sell to people to use in their house. Totally. Building a prototype that does a cool demo, that's one thing. Making thousands of robots that are safe and reliable in our homes, totally different story. So maybe hold off on buying that robot butler for now. Yeah. But even if this Optimus thing is only hey, Shay Lef, as good as Musk says, it's still a big deal, right? Mm. Think of the possibilities. Robots helping older people, working in dangerous places. Absolutely. The potential here is huge GE, which is exciting, but also kind of scary. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What happens to all the jobs robots like that could do? And who gets to control this stuff? This isn't just about cool gadgets anymore. It really isn't. It's about the future of work, of society, maybe even what it means to be human. Okay, now we're getting deep. Musk's ideas, even if they only hey, hey, left come true, they make us think about these huge L questions. And that, that's important. It's like, you know, we start with these big flashy reveals, right? Yeah. Robotaxes, robots, the future's happening now, W. Ooh. But then we have to slow down and think, what does it all actually mean? Exactly. And that's the hard part. Anyone can get caught up in the excitement. But we got to ask, what about the stuff nobody's talking about yet? Yeah, like this whole robo-taxi thing. Sounds awesome. Cheap rides for everyone. But what about all the people who drive for a living, NLWE? Delivery drivers, truckers? Right. Are those jobs just... Go, go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not just transportation either. Musk's talking about Optimus in factories, restaurants. So then what? What do all those people do? That's the question, isn't it? And there's no easy answer. Maybe it means retraining, learning new skills. Maybe it means we have to rethink how our whole economy works, you know? Like universal basic income, that kind of stuff. People have been talking about that for ages, but this almost makes it feel real, you know? It does make it feel more urgent, that's for sure. Because this technology, it's not waiting around for us to figure it out. Okay, so big picture time. Musk has his vision, right? And he's put dates on it. Is he being realistic this time, or is this going to be another one of those, well, Elon was off by a few years? I got to be honest. It's hard to say. We've seen him do some amazing stuff, things nobody thought possible. But this is different. This is changing how society works, not just building a cool product. It's like, yeah, the tech is one thing. But then you've got laws and people being scared of robots and just figuring how to make it all actually work. And that's what makes it so interesting to talk about, right? Because the answers aren't just about wires and software. It's about us, how we want to live. So to everyone listening, here's what we want you to take away. This stuff is coming, whether we're ready or not. Don't just get excited or scared. Ask the hard questions. Talk about it. Because the future, we're all building that together.